Is let's start the clock, Mark, and think about where we are. So, I mean, y y Asian markets have been have been weighed down by concerns around this. And just a few hours ago, when we hadn't had the news that the fire had been contained, we were sort of seeing peak fear around this. Some of that has been dialed back a little bit. We certainly see that in U.S. futures. Yes, I think so. I think we're getting a much more balanced perspective here. You've got to remember that we, you know, most people obviously have no idea about this topic and we therefore immediately jump to comparisons that just really aren't valid. There won't be another Chernobyl. It's an entirely different situation around nuclear reactors nowadays. And even a Fukushima situation is uh, theoretically possible, but very, very unlikely. So I think that the, some of the comparisons really scared the market, but are not valid. So there is a lot of, this is where social media can become quite dangerous in driving that panic. We are getting a little bit more balance into markets but I think what it has flagged up to people is that there are still unpredictable elements of this war so yes while we might mm. no longer be worrying specifically about the nuclear power plant it has made us realize that we don't know what fear might have to come next what might be the next move from Putin and from Russia and that's why there is still a slightly risk averse tone but I think it'll pair further as we go into non-farm payrolls later on yeah. today. Yeah, a reminder of the risks then involved. And we are going to be hearing from the IAEA Director General. They're going to be holding a press conference at 10.30 CET, so 9.30 uh, UK time, London time, where I am, uh, for, for more details. And hopefully we'll get more clarity and perhaps even before then. Um, we are also seeing, of course, uh, havens being bid on this. The dollar is up. It's up two-tenths of a percent. We'll talk more about FX in a moment, perhaps. Are you surprised to see where some of the selling has come through? The Hong Kong market, for example, Mark, does it deserve to be uh, as, uh, as sold off as it is today on this story? Uh, look, I was a little bit shocked by the Hong Kong market first thing this morning. But of course, we actually saw Chinese shares get hit in US time yesterday. Um, this is much more idiosyncratic Hong Kong story. I am still still surprised by the strength of losses. The he he Hang Seng index is down 2.6% on the day. I still think, or I, as I kind of said earlier on this week, I think that longer term, this provides one of the best value plays out there. Um, but I think that short term, this is a market that is sinking to new lows day after day. Sentiment remains very negative especially domestically, mm. given the imminent lockdown around COVID testing. OK, and we're still watching the ruble fall, the ruble sliding another 8.5%, I see, against the dollar in Moscow trading. So that's, uh, that's still part of the story. Another thing that's still part of the story, commodities, rising commodities, certainly has been a, a, a narrative of this week, Mark. And today we get the UN food prices data, which uh, I know many people watch for. This is the big story of the moment. I mean, it is about, later on this year, it'll be about inflation, but for markets at the moment, it's commodities. Obviously, there's a bigger non-market story out there, but for markets, it is about commodities, it is about inflation. And so when we get headlines like we'll get today about the UN food prices reaching a new record, breaking the previous record in 2011, remember that came with the Arab Spring riots that were food-related, this will cause some more scary pieces over the headlines around commodities and inflation and the related policy response. Mark, thank you. Remember, you can get up-to-date analysis and insight from Mark and the rest of the Markets Live team. MLIV Go, that is the functions you use on your terminal.